Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got another developer interview for you guys. And in case you're unaware, this is kind of some new content I'm bringing to the channel. I've been sitting down and interviewing various game developers in the quote, boomer shooter genre. So today I have the second interview in the series and we are speaking with Swordfish, who is the CEO, the chief executive officer of Vector Z Studios, the studio behind the game Midair 2, which I have featured on the channel already. So if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link it in the video description. Please go check that out to give you the context of what Midair 2 is and what we're talking about today. And note, the gameplay you're also going to see running in the background is me attempting to play Midair 2 with a bunch of veterans. And yes, I was fighting Swordfish as well. So please excuse the total newbiness of the gameplay. I tried my best. Anyways, let's get into the interview now. This is my chat with Swordfish. I hope you enjoy. It's kind of a funny story. I joined the Midair 2 Discord, and the first person I messaged was Swordfish, purely because his name was Swordfish, and he was an ocean creature. I'm an octopus. He's a swordfish. I had no idea his position in Vector Z Studios. <laughs> I just was like, I wanted to talk with somebody, and I was like, this guy's named Swordfish. <laughs> and we've had a good rapport, and he's agreed to do this interview. So, Swordfish, Welcome. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Yeah, I'm glad to glad, glad to be here, and I, I like that that ocean connection. Um, thought that was interesting. <laughs> like I, I hadn't realized that, and you know, I really liked uh, finding that out. It's like just kind of a random coincidence. It was. It was just completely random. You know, <laughs> when you have a list on Discord of all the the various people you can message, you you know, you just <laughs> yeah. message somebody randomly and hope you know they answer you and. I, I missed a swordfish. So here we are. Well, let's talk about let's talk about midair two. Let's talk about vector Z. Let's talk about what you guys are up to. You know, let's jump into your background a little bit first to kick things off. You know, obviously your tribes guy was tribes like the main classic shooter you played growing up, or did you jump around and play other uh, other shooter games? What's your kind of your background there? Well, I think I started my first. Uh first game was like when I was like five or six my family got one of those like Apple II computers and I started with like Cosmic Osmo and like like 2D games back then like Carmen San Diego um, I think my first like action game was probably Descent um, Descent and Doom kind of simultaneously um, and I think I'm pretty sure the first FPS game I played was yeah it was probably Doom um, and then a little bit of Quake and yes I, I first played Tribes when I was 13 I remember uh, it was seventh grade and all my friends were like passing around this Tribes demo CD, and um, I still remember like the first time loading into that Raid Nance base and flying off into the rain, um, and hearing like the the whirl and whoosh and all that of the like the weapons. It was I'm never gonna forget that. So, so would you say that Tribes is your favorite game of all time, or do you have another game that you you'd put up there at the top? Um, yeah, pretty much. It's hard to to pick one in particular, but pretty much any game. Um, that has like, like skiing and jetpacks, so like pretty much all of them uh, have been at various times my favorite because um, it's all part of the same DNA, really. Awesome, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the development side of things. And um, you know, you're the CEO of Vector Z Studios. You know, what has been your guys' biggest challenge, and what have you done to rise and meet that challenge through your time developing Midair 2? Well, um, I think it's it's pretty much like I, I'd never I've never like owned a company before. I've never started my own company. This is the first time um, I've done anything like this, and it was a momentous opportunity. Like um, I I knew like I, I had to seize this opportunity when it, like it presented itself presented itself to me, um, and it, I, I also knew at the same time that I had a lot of learning to do. Um, so, in short, like the biggest challenge has been learning how to do all this, how to, how to be a CEO, how to run a company. Um, so it's been a lot of read and to meet, to meet that challenge, I'd say it's, it's been a lot of reading and, and making mistakes and, and realizing that the best way to grow from those mistakes is to admit them <laughs> and face them and realize like that, that was dumb. Like that didn't work. Um, how do we, how do we do better this time? And, and it's not just about an internal dialogue. You gotta have a team. You gotta, you gotta bounce your ideas off people. So, um, just, just like a kind of like a long trial and error period. Um, so is this uh, your personal first experience de developing, or have you have you done stuff like this in the past? 
I did. I made a lot of um, like maps in Tribes One, and I kind of was the organizer and like uh, put together a um, like a, a map pack that was released to the community in Tribes One, really late, really late in the game, like around 2011. So like T1 was what like 13 years old at that point. So um, there weren't like many people around, but it was still fun to do that and like organize a team of people doing something creative. And that was really probably my first experience like like leading a creative group or team like in a in, to achieve a goal. Um, and from there, I you know was like running tournaments in in original midair, in and then it, into midair CE. I was like running organizing um, both non cash prizes and cash prize tournaments different kinds of tournaments, um, but never like any kind of game development, no. Never like um, like being involved in the nuts and bolts of, of an actual game before. Well, it's awesome to see, you know, I've done a lot of research on where you guys started with, you know, as a community from the original midair and where you guys are now. You guys just releasing, recently put out a really great patch. Um, so it's been really cool as somebody on the sidelines, basically just researching everything for videos to kind of see the progression and learn a little bit about the story. And so I've you know, been curious about maybe some of the more game design decisions um, and on that side of things. And so with Midair 2, so from what I learned about tribes, you know, they kind of had like this soft class system where there was like armor classes and stuff like heavier armor set guys and lighter set guys. And when I've been playing Midair 2, it seems like you guys have moved away from that system. Um, is is that the case? And if so, is, what's your design philosophy behind this change? Uh, that is the case. Um, currently, we we just have um, one the one armor in the game, um, the light armor, um, and and a very limited like I think we just have we even took out some of the other packs. We just have the energy pack right now. And just a handful of weapons, because um, we really just wanted to focus and get like um, the the really like the the meat potatoes, I guess you could say, of of the movement and the the kind of core essence of the FPSC experience. Like, um, and then and build outward from there. Like, because if you're not gonna, if you don't have a, a satisfying like uh, the bare bones experience, let's call it the the, the LT experience, as as they called it in Trez One, then you won't be able to build on from there and like get it more satisfying. Um, and it, it's it hasn't changed too much since original midair, but we've we've made some improvements on like how certain weapons work. Like with the chain gun overheat, we're we're really proud of that change because um, chain gun was really a problem, um, has always been a problem in in, in FPSC games because it's the only project like bullet weapon. We're really proud of that change. Um, so I'm I'm veering way off topic here. You asked me no, about no, no, it's totally decisions. okay. But um, basically, yeah, like we, we it's some, we know that it's it's there's a large port swath of, of previous tribes players that aren't going to be happy with just this kind of game. We're well aware of that. We've gotten endless comments about that, um, and and we get it. And and just like how I was saying earlier that my first experience, like I can so vividly remember, it, is, is jetting off that rain dance base and the sound of the the disc launcher. For someone else, it, it could very well be and and very likely is like the sound of firing a mortar or like. Uh, flying it, flying over the hills in like a, a massive heavy armor, and being in, feeling indestructible. So we're aware that like the whole the, the whole entirety of the the base that's what we call you know called the base was the name of the mode. Uh, we're, that that base is um, really the if if uh, if we call LT like the the essence of or like the core, like the the most pure form of, of FPSC, then um, then base is like the the grand kind of gathering of, of, okay. of all the elements um so we we want to get to that eventually but we know that the original midair tried to do that mode on a, like a shoestring budget um, mm. i won't say the exact number but it was nowhere near the amount that they should have had to to, to but not should have is, is a tough word but it needed more money they i think they needed um more resources to develop further flesh out the mode because it needs a lot and so we're the same we want to learn from that lesson and not try and do it um with with well, any resources because we, we have <laughs> even less funding than they did. We we're starting yeah. out with less capital, so we didn't. It, it would have been foolish for us to think that we do a better job with less resources. But eventually, um, we do. It, it's if we get uh, if we're able to secure um, something. I can talk about down the line in, this, in the interview. But uh, if we end up getting the requisite investment, um, it's absolutely something we'd want to do. Well, yes. I mean, sometimes less is more, right? You guys got to establish. Yeah. You guys got to establish your foundation, and then you can add 
more features. And that mm -hmm. is a perfect segue into my next question. Um, you know, with this patch, you guys put League game mode into the game, which for me, I'm really excited to try. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but it looks like as somebody who's going to be a total noob to not only Midair 2, but just FPSZ in general, League looks like a much more approachable, kind of more casual game mode that I, I personally am really excited to try. So I guess... You yeah. might have already kind of answered this, but you don't have to give me any specific details, but do you have more ideas, more game modes on your to-do list for the future to keep adding content to Midair 2? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, so one, one, of the, um, the other, one of the next ones um, we've, we've been thinking about doing, uh, attempting is a kind of single-player mode. Not, not like a story mode. I want to quickly nib that in the bud. Um, it's not like a campaign or anything, but like, a, a mode that you can play on your own, um, either, either when you're offline uh, or you don't have anyone else around. Yeah. Um, so basically, that mode would be like a, like a time trial or race or like obstacle course. And there there have been modes like this in in past tri past tribes games, um, past FPSC games, um, where you're kind of like it's you against uh, uh, like kind of a, a race track, so to speak, or like an obstacle course, and you have to you know see how and see how fast you can compete it, and then. I don't think there was ever like a leaderboard, but what we want to do is have like a leaderboard for that, so that um, you know people who are really into like time trial and speed running will will feel right at home. Yeah, like just um, that's just one example of like a, a mode that we really want, something that'll I think set us apart and make us um, a little more accessible to other other kind of types of gamers. Awesome. Well, in my previous question, you mentioned uh, player feedback, and you know, with the, with the decision to just stick with just one armor type, you maybe have had some people not be super thrilled about that. But when you do take player feedback into consideration, you know, there's obviously a lot of positive and there's negative. When when you're asking for player feedback, what's the best kind of feedback that you can get from people in the community? Um. Well. I think there's there's different ways of defining best, and I think um, first and foremost is the like the location of it. <laughs> Weirdly enough, um, it's it really helps us when um, we can kind of get feedback and um, written form obviously is is best. Um, like, but hearing hearing like people's like you know verbal reactions like when you're with them, you know, you're not gonna forget those. But it's just it's easier to like share and and collate uh, feedback when it's in a written form. Um, and within written form, um, in our Discord, um, on our various you know, social medias, um, if if for people that aren't in Discord or aren't as aren't as like entrenched in the community, you know, we read that. We read the comments on our YouTube. We read comments on our our Twitter, um, and just make sure it's like you're honest about it. Like you don't need to. It doesn't need to be you know full of emotion. But as long as um, you know if something upset you, we want to know. But you know, as long as it's not like in the form of an attack um, or like super derogatory because no one wants to feel attacked yeah of um, course. no one wants to be put down you know because people make mistakes and and there's oversights and we're all human like so just clearly like the, what's the problem how 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 did you encounter it and just like yeah that's that's pretty much all there is about good feedback just awesome. being constructive yeah absolutely well, going back into talking about development, you know, I know you guys have had some ups and some downs and your experiences as a developer or we're speaking on behalf of your team. Like what is something that has kind of been a challenge for you guys as a team that you've been able to kind of overcome, but it has taken you a decent amount of time? Well, um, the, the most time consuming thing, I, I think, um, throughout the entire experience has been um like legal challenges and uh, yeah and and like governance and like with stuff to do with the company but specifically to do with um like the actual game development of midair 2 um probably just like that's 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 kind of a tough question um time consuming aspect of development probably like deciding on things um mm -hmm. and like and coming to coming to consensus about um, because we, we we talk a lot, um, and we, we we discuss you know how we want to do things and like how game like certain game modes should be designed and like design docs and um, you know things we may, may, might yeah, excuse me things we might want to try. Um, so yeah, pro probably just like yeah communication and, and and staying organized. Yeah, you know it's just interesting to just kind of hear how it all works, and you guys are doing this from remotely right like you all work from different mm -hmm. parts of the world 
Yep, correct. Yeah, fully yeah. remote um, international team. We have people in Finland, um, in the UK, Australia, um, the West Coast of North America, people in Canada, East Coast of the uh, United States. Sorry, I, I, meant, I said West Coast of North America. West Coast of the United <laughs> States, uh, East <laughs> Coast of the United States, um, all, all over the US. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, am I forgetting anyone? I, I feel like that's, that's mostly it. Yeah, so fully remote, and yeah, we're all connected through Discord and uh, email. Awesome. Well, the next question, hopefully it's not going to be too hard of a question to answer. It's the one that I personally am most curious about because it's something that I, I see in, you know, I, I mentioned I'm a Quake guy. I see this in the arena FPS all the time. You know, in my Midair 2 video that I made, I expressed concerns about uh, the FPS Z's ability to keep new players around because the learning curve is quite steep. It's the same with Arena FPS. You know, these veterans have been playing these games for 20 plus years. They're pretty tough to go against. And why grind on a game as a new player and get smashed over and over by veterans when you can just go play a very easy and spammy game like Call of Duty. So mm -hmm. my question to you is, is this something that you guys think about during your development process? And if so, how do you guys plan to attack that problem of keeping new players from leaving your game just after a couple of hours? Because it's been a little tough for them. Absolutely. No, I, I couldn't agree more. It's definitely the, in my opinion, I think it's, that's the, our biggest challenge, um, without a doubt, is um, because nothing else matters if, if no one wants to play the game, if no one can stick around long enough to play the game. Literally nothing else matters. Um, so it's for, 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 for me, it is, it's priority number one. And I think I have, from my perspective, as, as before I became CEO, I was mostly on the marketing side and dealing with like the community, direct interaction with the community. So I had, a, I probably had, um, of members of the dev team, I probably had some of the most interactions directly with players. Um, because I, of the, of the thousands of, like, I think it's, we have like around 2000 um, people who have keys right now to the closed beta. Um, I get, I personally gave out a good, ch good chunk of those, like actually like PMing the people, Hey, like, here's the key. Like, this is how you set up the game. This is how you play a little short blurb, uh, any issues they had. Um, and often that would involve like getting feedback. Like they, I'd be the first one they'd PM like after they play, like, Hey, by the way, thanks to the key, like this game is really hard. And like people were being jerks or like, Hey, it was fun, but like um, this, this was really like bugging me. So I've, I've heard that plenty, um, both both in the original midair where I had pretty much the same role, and in in midair C and into midair two. Um, so it's been it's been definitely I've had plenty of experience with that, and um, it, it what it's what it boils down to to me is is like holding hand, holding holding new players' hands, and having really a rich first time user experience, making sure that. Um, there was a tutorial in, in original Midair, but um, it wasn't it wasn't voice narrated. There it was just there was just a text guide, um, and I did, I don't feel like that was immersive. Enough. I feel like tutorial you have to have it has to feel immersive, it has to feel engaging, it has to feel exciting. Um, it's it's going to be someone's first experience with the game, um, so you don't want it to feel like um, they're like watching a, a PowerPoint or something. Um, so we're, right. we're 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 wanting to do a very a much more immersive tutorial than they did in uh, original Midair, um, uh, a playable experience um, that is you're forced to do when you first load up the game, um, and and it'll kind of be like uh, I don't know if you played Apex uh, Apex Legends, but they oh, yeah. they have like a firing range. It's obviously wildly popular in that game. Like people love the firing range. It's mm -hmm. it's it's so much so they even had to like you know make make it the way it is now, which is it's way better than when the game launched. Because um, they they saw how important it is, how important how people use that, and we'll go back to it even even not being new players. So I think having learning learning from like lessons like that from how other games do it um, has been a great source of inspiration. Like they the way that Bloodhound leads you into the arena and you slide down that slope into the the, the firing range. I just love all. I love the way they did that. I think it's great. Um, and I see us doing something sort of similar, um, just making sure it's immersive and that. Um, things are explained vocally, um, that it's replayable, that you, there's like challenges you can complete within the t training mode, um, and yeah, that it covers as many bases as possible. Awesome. Well, I think that's really great. I think a good new player onboarding experience, for lack of a better term, is uh, is really critical. So that's great to hear that. Um, Actually, let me. Sorry, let me just end. I forgot to add one one another. Yeah, no problem. So beyond beyond just the tutorial, because um, like. It's it's keep about keeping people engaged beyond that as well. Um, 
so we, we want to make sure that the progression system um, and that things like uh, uh, like the reward system is <laughs> to use like it's rewarding um, mm -hmm. that, it's, that it doesn't feel laborious or that it doesn't feel like too much of a grind that it doesn't feel like it's pay to win or that we're sucking people dry and like asking them for money to complete certain tasks we want to make sure that people are getting um, regularly getting uh, uh, credit rewards so they can purchase cosmetics um, badges we're going to have accolades we're going to have we already have steam achievements would you put in this last patch um and making sure that like that because i feel like that is not another something people love and will, will draw them into the game is feeling like they're progressing having having visual evidence of of them progressing getting better their rank will be going up um they'll have a page where they can look at all the, their stats i think that will be key as well totally agree awesome man that's really great stuff thank you for sharing all that um, jumping back, one more question about the development process. It, can, do you have a personal triumph or a team triumph that you're willing to share with us that was just really epic for you guys to, to get done? Um, it's going to sound pretty boring, but for me, um, I keep bring, bringing the company side back into it, but you did, you did ask me about the CEO question. So um, on the company side, the Vector Z side, it was so... It was it was such a great moment when we finally got all IP, uh, all intellectual property that had to do with the game, all that had been developed around the game, into one body, um, into the company being consolidated. Yeah. That felt really because we'd been working on that. We had that had been like a, a about a year long effort, um, just lots of setbacks and like complications and funding issues and like lawyers are expensive and mm -hmm. um, uh, startup the startup accelerators are expensive, you know, um, and yeah, we had to. So so anyway, I'm getting out of the point, but that was that was that was really great. For in terms of midair two, um, yeah, it's like reconnecting with the community, like, like coming back after a long time, being able to say that hey, we're we're back, we're still here, um, we're not giving up in the game. We never we never planned to, um, and sorry for for being MIA, but yeah, like it, it felt good to 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 be back and and have people be happy to see that. Well, I think it's important for fans to realize that. You know, Midair 2 is a complete and total passion project, and a lot of the times these passion projects, whether they're, uh, you know, a, a startup company like yourself or, or a mod team or an indie solo dev, it's love, and sometimes when you're scattered all over the world and you've got all these moving pieces, I mean, that that can't be easy, but the fact that you guys have stuck with it and you've, you're here, you know, you are communicating, you just dropped a, a sweet patch, so obviously things are moving i have no doubt that your diehard community will keep your game rocking for years years to come but i i do have to ask the question that said do you does vector z have plans beyond midair 2 or is that totally jumping the gun am i totally ahead of the game here <laughs> um well i mean it's it's always good to dream um and have have a plan um or have an idea of what you might do if in the future um I think it's it's important to stay present present and and focus on what's happening in front of you right in happening in front of you now but um you know uh having an idea for the future um if if it should come um is just it's like good and it's a good it's a good good way to be so that that being said uh it it, it really depends on um how mid or two goes but um we've definitely discussed uh further um, like building out the game more, as I said, with like base mode. Um, you know, if if that if if we go into open beta and um, it's we're seeing a good launch and we've, we've raised like enough money to do so, like we'll absolutely like make the game bigger, make make a make a base mode, make a bigger mode, um, and 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 kind of take that under our belt. Um, but beyond beyond midair to the game itself, that's once again like. It's super far ahead in the future, but yeah, like yeah. there's like like a midair three or like a complete rebranding, um, another kind of game in the same vein. It, it would we've never if if you're asking like something beyond like an FPSD type type game, no, we haven't. I there has never been any discussion. Yeah, anything besides well, that was that actually going to be my my next <laughs> question. I was just gonna I was gonna say if you guys didn't have to worry about money, there was no budget, there's no issue. Would you tackle something? crazy or would you stay within your fpz uh lane for lack of a better term well i i have always thought that um an fpsz battle royale would be amazing Ooh. Um, battle royale games uh are the 
some of the biggest games around right now and have been for you know what like five or six years oh yeah um that's they've kind of like relaunched fps as uh, a genre uh, because of brs um so some kind of battle royale but three-dimensional i i think that sounds pretty epic swordfish i have to say oh. and and as a former game dev and artist i you got my brain like oh you know <laughs> But, uh, but uh, well, okay, so totally one last random question about Apex now because you've mentioned it a couple times here. I, I used to be a huge Apex player as well in season one. I haven't had a chance to play for a while, but I think I put well over a thousand hours into that game. So, who's your main character that you play? Oh man, Valk. I mean, it's kind of obvious. But, I'm a yeah, sweaty, I, I love... I'm a sweaty uh, Wraith player. <laughs> really? You're okay. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I love Wraith. Wraith's great. Like, I. I just gotta have the the, the the movement. I just love yeah. I love the way like she can move and um, just kind of does everything. And I'm trying to learn Horizon lately because I watched a bunch of uh, Imperial Hal in the last ALGS and mm -hmm. just seeing what he can do with Horizon. I just like I want to do some stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably probably Valk is who I played the most. And who who besides Wraith for you? Oh man, I haven't played for a while. I only played Wraith. I'm okay, weird. Wow. I'm weird when it comes to that. When I find a character I like, I tend to stick with them. But uh, I was I was decent. I got I got I can't remember the ranks, but I got up into diamond. I had like the oh, nice. the sweat all the sweaty badges, like the all the damage badges, and I got twenty kills in a match and stuff. So I, I was I was I could hold my own. I was pretty good back this. in the day. Look at this. Three, four, three or four years later, and you still remember. What do you remember? You remember. I'm the humble bragging. You remember bro. the war? No, 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 no. I don't mean that. I mean, look <laughs> what you remember. The, this is a, once again a lesson for me right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Day, yeah. Like, okay. You learned. You remember the badges. You remember like that's that's what that's you know true. something you're already you're still the accolades. To me, it's like the accolades. Like exactly you gotta have that stuff. Midair, you gotta have Midair that did shit. not have that. Yep. No, I yeah. I completely agree, and I and I remember in my um. My video to you guys uh, about your your games. Excuse me. It, I mentioned Steam achievements, accolades, progression, and so it's great having these this conversation and hearing you talk about this stuff that you're going to add in because it's all it's all stuff that I've been thinking to myself like, you know, um, these these boomer shooters, these games that come out with multiplayer. You know, they you got to have something that's going to hook this current generation of gamers because mm -hmm. just putting a game out and having it have some fun mechanics unfortunately for better or for worse it's just not good enough anymore no and so oh, there's a science there is there is so it's great that you're you're keyed into that and um i think that this has been a great great interview and i i've learned a lot talking to you i've really enjoyed my time and that that's that's kind of yeah, it likewise. for me so um i guess kind of as we wind it down here is there anything else that you want to say or talk about I, I don't mean to put you on the spot but if you have any anything you want to say to community members who might watch this video or or any, anything else um I'll, I'll give you the, give you the time well just thanks for watching if you've made it this far um i um i really enjoyed doing this interview as well and, and thank you for for asking me and having me um i i haven't really done many interviews, um, so it's been a novel experience for me. Um, but I really enjoy being able to share uh, my thoughts on these things and and kind of some behind the scenes info. Um, and these been have been really great questions. Uh, it's actually helped me. Like it, you know, when you're asked a question, you it feel like you you're, you make, makes you think about it more. Um, so it's it's been it's been helpful to me. And um, just thanks for for watching. And uh, we just dropped a patch. Come check it out. Um, you know, follow us on, on all our socials. We're trying to grow them. Um, we're trying to get our presence out there. Tell your friends. Um, we still have some keys if you're really desperate for one. Um, if you really want to really want to play and, and don't want to wait for our play test, just come badger us in our Discord or, or PM someone. And um, yeah, I mean, just come play. Awesome. Well, thank you, Swordfish, everybody. Again, this is Swordfish, CEO of Vector Z Studios, the studio behind Midair 2 a tribes inspired game trying to keep the tribes dream alive uh go check it out it's on steam come join the discord message message swordfish i'm putting him on the spot or message <laughs> message some of the devs see if you could get a key and hop in there and uh, join the community for some some pickup groups so swordfish i'm gonna leave it there thanks again for joining me i really appreciate it thank you 
First off, if you tuned into this entire video, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. I know it was a little bit of a long one, but a lot of great information coming out from Swordfish of Vector Z Studios. I do have more developer interviews coming soon to the channel, so if you're enjoying this type of content, please give me a like and consider subscribing, and drop me a comment let me know how I'm doing, guys. As always, thank you so much for hanging out, and guys, I'm Salty Octopus, I'll see you next time.